why did Gibson come out of his net after making the great save on Gabe Landeskog? The only reason I could think that he came out of the net was probably... To, well, he dove for the puck, obviously, but he didn't get enough of it. I honestly think that if he was going to try to dive out of that, he was going to try to give it to one of his teammates, but they weren't there. And then that's what eventually led to Gabriel Landeskog getting the wraparound game winner in game one. Well, that's probably true. So, uh, though that was probably just a giveaway to what the result was in game one on Friday night. Ducks lose 3-2 to two in game one of the two-game miniseries to the Colorado Avalanche in overtime. Well... At least they lasted more than seven seconds. Yes, they did last more than seven seconds. But I don't think Gibson should have tried to dive for the puck. I think he should have rather let his defense, defense partner get to the puck and maybe try to make an outlet pass up the ice to get a breakaway in on the Av goalie, Philip Grubauer. It's probably true. A lot of good things to come out of game one, though, of that series. Remember how many times I had said our second line needs to do something? Well, guess who scored our second goal, guys? Adam Henrique got his first of the season off of a great two-on-one with Danton Heinen. Check this out. That was a thing of beauty. Heinen got the primary assist, and Jacob Silverberg, my favorite player, who is also a name on the back of my sweater, gets the secondary assist. That was his first point of the year. That had tied the game at two at that point, about a minute after Miko Rontanen had scored for Colorado their second goal. Hampus Lindholm got his first of the year in the first period, coming late on a little bit of a rush, slap shot one-timer, top shelf on Philip Grubauer, but it was a 3-2 loss in overtime. However, in game two, Ducks win! And it was a correct prediction score! If you remember from my previous video, I predicted 3-1, but the result was wrong, but it doesn't matter because the score I predicted was correct. Second time this year, and this time, the result was it was a victory, even though I predicted loss. So, I don't know if I can pull that off a third time. Let's talk about game two now. 3-1, Ducks are dominated pretty much the whole game. We're about a minute in, Philip Grubauer had made a save in the ensuing face-off. It comes right to Jacob Silverberg! Look at that, right off the hop, Jacob Silverberg, my favorite duck, shoots it top shelf, and it's 1-0. The Ducks would get another goal later on in the game, and it came in the second period off of a great pass from the captain, Ryan Getzloff, to Ricard Raquel, of all people, to score. Two nothing, and that was the only goal the Ducks would score. Miko Rontanen would get one for the Avs as they were making a huge, huge all-out push. As I mentioned, he 
Nico was a big name that I had wanted you guys to watch, and he was really good. That guy is really big. He's about 6'5", 230. He's like the size of DK Metcalf if you're if you guys watched a lot of football. Hampus Lindholm got the empty netter, his second of the season, and his second goal in as many games. And the Ducks will take game two of this series. Another split. 3-1 is your final. Now let's go outside and talk about our upcoming series in the desert that is Arizona. There we go. Today we will be breaking down the series between the Anaheim Ducks and the Arizona Coyotes. The interesting thing about the Coyotes is that they were once called the Phoenix Coyotes until they changed their name to Arizona. And it's interesting, they actually play in the city of Glendale. Yeah, don't mix up Glendale, Arizona, though, with our Glendale, California. It's, uh, don't, you don't want to get yourself confused with that. If for injury report, um, the Coyotes lost goalie their one, number one goalie, Antti Ranta, due to an undisclosed injury, and their star defenseman, Oliver Ekman Larson, or OEL, to a lower body injury. Ooh. So somewhere in the lower body. We don't know what specifically it is. For the Ducks, a new injury update. They lost Sonny Milano to an upper body injury after Sunday's game. And I didn't know this at the time, but before the Friday game, we had actually had Max Jones activated off of IR, so he's been back, which is a really good thing. He'll be on the top line tonight with Ryan Getzloff, the captain. For players to watch, we'll start with the Coyotes. I would say keep your eye out for Connor Garland, number 83. He has been very solid. He's emerged into a very, very solid player. Phil Kessel, for all you diehard hockey fans, I'm sure that is a name you'll remember. He has been very good with Arizona, but he is a very, very good hockey player. Second liner. And also Clayton Keller, who they locked up long term and they think he should, I think he's able to fulfill his potential. He's a solid player, but we'll have to see how it goes. For the Ducks, let's watch for goalie John Gibson. He has been playing lights out lately. Played two really good games against Colorado. Also, Sam Steele has had some really good chances as of late. Let's see if he maybe gets a goal. Uh, Max Comtois, of course, he still is our leading goal scorer with three. Somehow Hampus Lindholm is second in with two. And I would also then say Carter Rowney, who has four assists this year. No goals, but four points. So let's watch for those players. With the, rec the records are pretty even coming into this. Ducks have two wins, two losses, and two losses beyond regulation. Either overtime slash shootout, even though both of those were in overtime. One against Vegas and one against Colorado. In terms of scores, I think we will win tonight, and I am going to go with a score of four to two for the game on Thursday. I'm going to predict a three to one loss. Actually, no. Um, we're gonna call it a four to three loss. And let's call it an overtime, just to be bold, considering that we've already had a couple overtime games. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this, um, this episode of QuackCast. Please leave for me your prediction scores in the comments section below this video. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. And before I sign off, I want to thank you all for getting me to 100 subscribers. As we stand at the moment I'm shooting this video, I am at 102. Can we get to 200 within three years? That's, that fate is decided by you, my wonderful you viewers on YouTube. All right, everyone, have a good day. Stay safe. Go Ducks, let's get another win tonight.